I am the furthest thing from a car guy you can get. I have no idea how an engine works, I can't identify specific makes or models, my expertise on cars goes as far as the Fast and Furious movies, which I unironically love, by the way. So when it comes to racing games, I definitely fall into the casual fan category. I'm not one of those people that turns their play space into a makeshift cockpit so they can physically shift every gear and feel every pebble they run over. Those are crazy people, or as they're more commonly known, racevics. But you don't need to have any vehicular knowledge to appreciate the baseline thrill of speeding down a track or executing a perfect drift. In my lifetime, I've played a smattering of Need for Speed titles, a healthy amount of Forza, mainly the Horizon games, and once, while at a friend's house, I got through the first mission of Driver on PS1, which I'm pretty sure makes me a gaming god. But even someone as underqualified in the genre as me has a definitive favorite racing series, and if you read the title or saw the thumbnail, you already know what it is. Burnout is awesome, and God do I miss it! To me, no other racing game, no matter how good, will ever top this series at its peak. Admittedly, I'm saying that having not played the first two entries, the original Burnout and its sequel, Burnout 2, Point of Impact. Everything I've seen of those two games portrays them as quality experiences in their own right, but I'm content to respect them from afar for laying the foundation for what developer Criterion would go on to make. Whenever I've thought back on the Burnout games I've played, I've had nothing but fond memories of blazing past traffic at 200 miles an hour, slamming opponents into guardrails, and causing obscene amounts of PG carnage in crash mode. But I also hadn't played any Burnout in a long time. Not surprising, since minus one remaster, the franchise has been dormant for about 14 years now. Hell, the only reason it's been on my mind recently was because someone in my Twitch chat asked me what I thought about it, and on a total whim, I downloaded 2005's Burnout Revenge on my Xbox One. And within 30 seconds of starting the first event, I felt a wave come over me. Yep! 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 <laughs> Video games used to be so much better. <laughs> Jumping back into a game like Revenge instantly reminded me of a different time, when gaming as a whole was more... pure. Back before publishers jumped on the never-ending live service trend, before microtransactions and battle passes became more important than a game's launch quality, back when you could just buy a complete product, and within minutes of starting, you were already having a blast. To me, Burnout perfectly represents a time when games were simply fun, lacking the all-too-common greedy baggage we see everywhere these days. That feeling really struck me, and after enjoying my handful of hours with Revenge, I felt compelled to go back a little further and revisit a title I've always put on the highest of pedestals. And I'm so glad I did. Burnout 3 Takedown was my introduction to Burnout, and man, what an introduction it was. If you're a longtime viewer of mine, you already know what my favorite stealth and action games are, and now you know which game tops the racing genre list. Burnout 3 falls into the holy trifecta of being, in my opinion, the best racing game, one of the best games ever made, and one of my all-time favorites. If the footage you're seeing on screen right now doesn't make you want to track down a copy of this masterpiece for yourself, then as far as I'm concerned, you don't have a pulse. You can keep your ultra-realistic driving sims, I'll take weaving through traffic at ludicrous speeds, thank you. I can't express how happy I was to realize all of this is as incredible as I remembered. I bought a copy of this childhood gem, expecting to relive the thrills for a session, maybe, and ended up pretty much 100%ing it. That's how amazing Burnout 3 is. This is a game all about taking risks. As you soar through the city streets, dodging unsuspecting commuters, you're constantly being rewarded with boost. The more dangerously you drive, the faster you fill the meter. Staying in the oncoming lane, narrowly missing other cars, performing extended drifts, 
Chaining all of these actions together ensure that breakneck speeds are being maintained, especially if you're wrecking your opponents on top of that. Putting another driver out of commission is called a takedown, hence Burnout 3's subtitle, and each takedown adds an additional chunk onto your boost meter up to a point, letting you maintain your insane forward momentum even longer. But if you end up slamming into an obstacle yourself, you'll lose a piece of the meter instead. This system inherently amps up the intensity of each race. If you fall behind, the best thing you can do is take bigger risks, up the aggression, do everything you can to maximize boost to help close the gap. Even getting taken out yourself isn't the end of the world thanks to the aftertouch mechanic, which slows down time and lets you steer your mangled carcass into opponents, and doing so will negate any penalty. It's an exciting cycle of metal-on-metal metal mayhem. The different events you participate in take full advantage of these mechanics. While there are the typical races and single-lap time trials you'd expect, there's also Eliminator, where the driver unlucky enough to be in last place is blown up each lap, Face-Off, a 1v1 duel against a unique vehicle that will be unlocked for you if you win, and one of my favorites, Road Rage, which is all about wrecking as many opponents as you can in two minutes or before taking too much damage yourself. It's absolute chaos, and I love it! Every one of these events is fun to go for Golden, though if I had to pick the weakest, it would be the face-offs, for the simple reason that it's the one part of the game with blatant rubber banding. In fact, I realized the trick to these 1v1 races is to not go ham, but instead tap the boost every second or so. For whatever reason, it seems to prevent the other guy from just blazing past you. Special mention has to be given to the amazing licensed soundtrack complementing all this on-screen action. I can't play any of the tracks for you in this video without making YouTube angry, but Burnout 3's selection is this perfect time capsule for early 2000s pop-punk and rock, with over 40 songs from bands like Fall Out Boy, The F-Ups, and New Found Glory. You should really look up the playlist when you get a chance. Actually, this could be neat. If you've played any of the Burnout games, let me know that one licensed song they have that gets you particularly hyped up. The one you never skip when it comes on. For me, it's Just Tonight by Jimmy Eat World. There's one other event type I haven't talked about yet, and that's Crash Mode. It's truly the extra mwah that elevates this whole package. As the name suggests, Crash doesn't want you dodging traffic, it wants you slamming into busy intersections, causing as much destruction as possible. Each of its courses are basically mini-puzzles, where you maneuver your vehicle into just the right spot to cause a chain reaction pileup, with the final disaster result being tallied at the end. Making enough of a mess lets you activate a Crash Breaker, turning your car into a four-wheeled bomb that only ramps up the chaos. There are also a handful of power-ups to steer into that give extra Crash Breakers, award bonus cash, or multiply your final score. It's so much fun, easily the best part of the entire game. I stopped doing races for five hours straight because I was too busy playing each and every Crash event that came up. There's like a hundred of them. I've been saying this for the longest time, but if this mode, as it is, was pulled right out of Burnout 3, same courses and everything, it could easily be sold separately today as a budget standalone. And no, that one forgotten XBLA thing doesn't count. That was like a mobile game with toy cars. Doesn't hold a candle to this, come on. One other aspect about Burnout 3 that jumped out to me as I played through it was its never-ending sense of reward. Your first few races, in the slowest vehicles the game has, already feel fast, and the sense of speed only amplifies as you continue. It took me about 12 or 13 hours to get every gold medal in the game, and that entire time I was constantly unlocking stuff. New events, yeah, but more importantly, new cars. There's an incredible feeling of forward progression. You'll never go more than a few races without something being given to you. In fact, at times it actually got a little annoying to be interrupted so often to be told I got a new thing, but it's a good problem to have. Unlike so many modern games, the experience never felt forcibly stretched out. There was never a moment I felt like I was grinding for anything. 
I was simply rewarded for having a good time, and it's depressing that doesn't seem to be the standard anymore. It's only fair, of course, that I mention the game's negatives, like its relatively small selection of repeating tracks, the extremely limited and boring paint options for all of the cars. The camera is locked to a fixed angle during crashes, which can obstruct your view of opponents you're trying to take down. The game will occasionally respawn you in a position that basically guarantees you're gonna wreck a second time. And DJ Striker, who provides commentary throughout your races, and in my opinion actually fits the game's tone, does get annoying as he repeats the same tired lines ad nauseum. This is Striker on Crash FM, covering all things burnout. He also commits the unforgivable sin of interrupting the music, though you can easily turn him off in the options. But really, all of these are small problems. The gameplay is so fun, so exciting, that any mild feelings of inconvenience you might experience will be forgotten the moment you take your frustration out on the jackass that just passed you. I've been praising the hell out of Burnout 3 Takedown for several minutes, and some of you are probably really excited to try it out for yourselves. But I must apologize for getting your hopes up. Because, unfortunately, this masterpiece isn't backwards compatible on modern systems. If you happen to still have an Xbox 360 hooked up, you can play it if you acquire a physical disc of the OG Xbox version. That's what I did. But the more time that passes, the less and less people will have that option. It's a crime that this game isn't easily available to everyone. Other Burnout titles are being sold, so why not the best one? Uh, that's some consolation, I suppose. If you're desperate to get your high-speed fix, there are at least a few other options for you. The previously mentioned Burnout Revenge can be downloaded and played on Xbox One and series consoles, and it's good, especially the new traffic checking feature that lets you tear through same-way cars like paper mache though going back to it after replaying 3 did make me like it less than I originally did. I'd best describe Revenge as Burnout on steroids, or Burnout made sweaty. AI has increased aggression, there's more obvious rubber banding, and they can withstand more damage making takedowns harder. Tracks have many more obstacles to avoid. Gold medals aren't as important for progression as skillful driving, so winning races doesn't feel as rewarding. And Crash Mode has inflated objective goals with no power-ups to help you close the gap. Burnout 3 was intense, but also had kind of a laid-back air to it, while Revenge is more a grit-your-teeth experience. It's still enjoyable, and you might actually prefer the increased challenge, but I personally found most of these changes to be more frustrating than anything. You could also try Burnout Paradise, which is the easiest entry to play given it was remastered only a few years ago. Paradise moves Burnout to an open-world setting, which isn't special anymore, but was pretty novel when it came out in 2008. The core driving is still well-made, and there's tons of events to do and cars to unlock, but the game does fall into a repetitive loop after a while. Races all end at one of eight landmarks, so you'll be seeing the same routes a lot. It's not hard to take a wrong turn and end up so far behind you have no chance of catching up, stunt challenges can be easily exploited at a few key locations, and there is no separate crash mode. Shame on you! Many fans didn't like the direction Paradise took, feeling the open world made things too aimless and samey, and they're not wrong, but it is still a good time. Nowhere near as good as 3, though. Despite its beloved status, Burnout hasn't seen a new entry in well over a decade, and if you're wondering why, the answer lies with Need for Speed. EA owns both of the IPs, and Need for Speed was always the more popular racing franchise. When it was struggling to find its identity in the late 2000s, Criterion was given the reins to make the excellent Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which revitalized the series by incorporating some of Burnout's DNA. It was such a huge hit that the studio became the primary developer for Need for Speed, making two more entries after that. By that point, either the devs simply got tired of the genre, or EA found Burnout to be redundant, so Criterion went on to work support for other titles like Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefield, though they are currently working on another as-of-now-untitled Need for Speed. 
Some former Burnout devs eventually left to form their own studio, Three Fields Entertainment, and they have attempted to make some spiritual successors over the years. First, there were Danger Zone 1 and 2, which revolved entirely around recreating the series' staple crash mode. And then came Dangerous Driving, which tried to capture the thrills of battling other racers on the open road. Despite knowing about these games for a while, I haven't actually played any of them myself. The reception to them seems to be a bit mixed, but I am at least glad that someone is trying to bring the series back and do it justice in some form. As with most dormant IPs I talk about on this channel, I would love nothing more than a new Burnout that takes full advantage of the power provided by next-generation consoles. But I also don't want this franchise tarnished by current-day business crap. Remember that EA owns Burnout, and the last thing I want is a broken, buggy disaster of a launch product with rotating storefronts forced always online. I just imagine a crash mode that has limited retry tokens that you have to buy in packs, something scummy like that. I miss the absolute hell out of Burnout, and replaying these games back to back has only made me miss it more. But I'd rather remember the good times I had with this franchise at its peak than have it ruined by corporate laziness and greed. But really, Burnout 3 is so fucking good. Find it, play it. Telling you that is the whole reason I made this video.